family, and thank you for coming to another night with Repair, Restore, and Grow Black Communities Behind Black Business. And tonight we have special guest, Rhonda Johnson, and Rhonda is the proprietor of Exquisite Care Spa and Wellness. Rhonda does massage therapy, she's an esthetician, you know, Rhonda's uh, uh, bringing a lot of uh, talent. She's also an ordained minister. So she's not only dealing with you in terms of your physical, but it's a comprehensive and holistic approach. There's a spiritual component and there's a physical and emotional component that she is able to deal with when she's treating you. So Rhonda, I wanna thank you for taking time to be with us tonight. Oh, you are so welcome, Denise. Thank absolutely. you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. We met at Juneteenth, uh, Southside Community Federal Credit Union, which is a black financial institution here in Chicago. They had a Juneteenth event, mm -hmm. and Rhonda was there, and uh, she was giving massages and sharing so much um, information uh, to people, and I thought it was a good thing for us to know that Rhonda is here, you know, and you know, we're all about supporting black businesses and the Southside Community Federal Credit Union is a black business. They're a banking institution. They provide loans for mortgages, for cars, for personal loans. They uh, provide financial literacy. And of course we need to know how to handle our money. That's, right. That's something that we don't get enough training about and conversation about. So true. And so they are there and willing to help you in all aspects of your finance. They've been there for over 20 years, so there's no excuse for most of you not to have had an account. In order for a banking institution to thrive, you have to create accounts. You have your money in so many other banks who do not give back, but you're helping them to create wealth by having your money sitting there and you're able to use your money to invest. So we have to learn to invest in ourselves. Southside Community Federal Credit Union is located at 55th and Wentworth, right there in the back of the mall at Garfield and Eisenhower Expressway. So please support the Southside Community Federal Credit Union because they are here to support you. We also, um, here at Repair, Restore, and Grow Black Communities, you know, we're here to enhance the support and awareness of black businesses. And so as we talk about our banking institutions, we're talking about all of our businesses. And that's why we have Rhonda here tonight. And we have had so many businesses here in the Chicago area that many of you do not know about. And that's why we have this podcast every night. We know that black businesses are more than likely to support our community. They're more likely to give back. They're more likely to hire black people, do business with other black people, serve as, as mentors for other aspiring business people and our children. Yes. Um, they're going to give back. And, and so this is, it's, it's the dollars and it's the time and the energy that is put back into the community. It's not just 100% the dollars. The dollars are important because we know that our dollars do not stay in our community. That's because we're spending our money with people who are not giving back, but they're using those dollars that they have extracted from our community to build their own. And so we have to change that. And the only people that can change that is us. So we also, um, are great proponents of our bookstores. We have a resurgence of black bookstores. We were down, we had 22 at one point, we were down to two, we went up to nine, and now there are two more that we're going to be adding to the list on our website. Uh, if you go to rrgbc.org, we have listed all of the bookstores. Why are our bookstores so important? Because that's where our history is. That's where our perspectives are. That's where you're gonna read about who we are and our contributions and how we can move forward. And I know you go to Amazon, it's, it's more convenient seemingly to go to Amazon, but it's something we have to develop in our consciousness to support 
our black bookstores. And so we feature a black bookstore on our website every month. And the bookstore that we're featuring for this month is Rose Cafe. Uh, Rose is a young lady. She's also a special education teacher. And she has an online bookstore with a lot of um, children's books and adult books that we can read. You can go to rosecafe.org and look at the plethora of books that she has to offer. We go a little step further and we have a book giveaway every month. Okay, last month we gave away a book of poetry that was actually written by the CEO and president of the Southside Community Federal Credit Union, Greg Brown. Uh, yes. But this month, the book that we're giving away is The Three Mothers by Anna Malika Tubbs. And this is a book of how the mothers of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, James Baldwin shaped the nation. They entrenched at that time in racism. Not to say we don't have our problems today, but they had it to face more face on and in more violent ways. But in that environment, they instilled resistance and that we have value in their sons. And Martin Luther King and James Baldwin and Malcolm X gave a lot. Malcolm Luke, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X actually gave their lives. Now, if you want to win a copy of this book, The Three Mothers, go to rrgbc.org and subscribe. We will purchase the book from Rose Cafe and pay for the shipping. That's how important we feel this book is. Something that we're making as a contribution to our community. So please support our black bookstores. And also in relationship to supporting our black bookstores, we have a petition out where we want our public schools and our local libraries to give contracts to our black bookstores. So we have a petition. Um, I had to update it because we have a new mayor <laughs> and uh, state reps. And so we want you to, a secretary of state it is, that we have uh, two people that we have to address with this matter. And uh, so we did update, it. We did update the names and you can go to Save Black Bookstores Chicago at change.org. That's Save Black Bookstores Chicago at change.org. And please sign our petition, okay? All right, so now we're going to talk about Rhonda and what Rhonda does. Rhonda is a massage therapist, esthetician, spa and wellness, transformational coaching, products and programs that she offers. Um, Rhonda is doing a lot of work and in a lot of different contexts. So tonight, Rhonda, uh, I want you to introduce yourself to our audience. Um, and you mentioned that you are a transformational coach and I would like for you to explain what that entails. Okay, well, as Denise was saying, my name is Rhonda Johnson. Um, I have an honorary doctorate in divinity. I'm ordained in ministry. I'm a licensed clinical massage, <clears throat> excuse me, massage therapist and esthetician. And I also have a background in as a hospice CNA. And uh, in addition to that, <clears throat> excuse me, I've experienced many different types of traumas. But I've, and I've taken all of this experience and put it into a package so that you can learn and you can heal and you can overcome obstacles in way less time than I did. I'm almost 60 years old and you shouldn't have to, it shouldn't take you uh, as long as it has taken me to deal with a lot of these issues. I can help you heal in a matter of days, months, and weeks, but definitely not years. I don't want anybody to go through the years that I went through. I can teach you so much so fast so that you can overcome your problems and move right along, move faster, and uh, have a better life. I use, I use massage therapy, I use aesthetics, I use everything that I've learned, all my skill and experience. I, I combine them and put them together and uh, make, make it happen. So Rhonda, wow, I mean, you even dealing with hospice. 
you know. So we're talking about life. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking all the way to the end of life. Yes. Um, now you are an ordained minister as mm -hmm. well. How has that impacted your work, being an ordained minister? Oh my God. Um, it's really everything because way back in 2011, that's when I made the decision that I wanted to serve God and his people. And this is what has helped me to overcome my trauma because the things, things that made me feel so bad, I never wanted to see anyone else feel that way. So I just took everything that I had learned, helping myself heal, helping others heal, and, uh, just develop the packages and programs and things like that. So, so when did you decide to become a minister? What, what inspired you to go in that, in that direction? You well, know? it was 2010, 2011, and my mother was dying. Okay. And I had always felt the calling. I had always mm -hmm. felt the calling. But at that time, it was, it was just convenient. Just, I just felt like that's what God wanted me to do. So your mom brought you up and you were you raised in the church? Uh, through my grandmother. My grandmother used to take me to church. Okay. And she took me to Sunday school. And I developed friends and community there. And little did I know, I was developing principles that would take me through the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that at that time. But when I look back at how I overcame a lot of things, mm -hmm. Things like that, that's the main thing. I mean, I'm so grateful that that woman, out of everybody in that family, mm -hmm. took me to church with her mm -hmm. on Sundays. It made all the difference. And uh, when I got a little bit older, I found some books. Um, did you ever, you said you always felt you had the calling. So mm -hmm. when the minister was up there, did you, were you thinking, you know, I, I, I can do this? Or that, that hadn't manifested yet. Um, by 2011, it, it, it did. Mm -hmm. It did. I just, I felt I was called because the situation dealing with my mother, it was, it was just so strong. And I had, I felt like I had nobody on my side except God. Mm -hmm. And um, I just felt like I wanted to continue and just help people with what I had learned already. Because a lot, the problem is a lot of people are going through life without any principles. They weren't taught that. They never got that in any, in any way in their life. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to overcome. And I learned that through years and years after watching situations, how they played out, and then how things kind of played out in my favor in the end. And I saw it's because God had his favor on me. So, as a um, as an ordained minister, people come to you, and 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 they 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 come to you. They are looking for help. They're they're looking for some upliftment, you know, with problems that they're having. But then, like you also indicated, there's the value system that we need to put in place. Yes, you know, I wish many of our churches would open up schools yes. schools for our children uh, educationally because I had in, in our last uh, podcast we talked about the importance of having our own schools and so schools that can provide not only the education but your education is not just about reading and writing you know right. you look at some groups I know like the Amish people you know, they're sending their children to school until, uh, what, sixth grade or twelfth grade, whatever. And then they'll stop because that's all you need to know. The rest of your learning is, is about you being a part of this community that we have created. And how you're going to develop and, and contribute as an adult to that. And we should kind of all have a system like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then the information that you're imparting is... is when you talk about values, you know, yeah. that's what I think creates the disconnect. Really? You know, really? Not, have, not valuing you as a person, not valuing your property, you know, as something that belongs to you. And not valuing ourselves. So true. So and true. Um, when you talk about dealing with traumas, you know, we as black people, I don't care how high we have risen we still have this cloak of oppression 
yeah. over us. If I were to give a definition of slavery um, or racism, I would say it's a systematic oppression of a people. A systematic oppression of a people. And we just keep running into that. You know, we can't seem to get out from under that. And so is that something that you think about or you talk about or address, you know, or ever have to talk about to people that are coming to you? Um, no, not, I mean, not, not really in not, my line of work. Because not directly. It, not, yeah, not directly. Mm -hmm. um, I just deal with a lot of the stress of it, mm -hmm. of different things. Mm -hmm. Because when people come in to, to where I work at, and they have all di all different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. They have they have different things going on with their body, but some very specific things in common that we're all dealing with. And and like, what are some of those things that in our community that we're dealing with? Oh, that's pretty common. Well, physical or or emotional well, or mental. Which that's, one? That's <laughs> going to, let's go one at a time. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Well, physically. People are dealing with strenuous jobs. Everybody's got uh, neck pain, shoulder pain, upper and lower middle back pain, pain in their legs. It's, it's always the same. I mean, when I first started out in massage therapy, I used to look for people to come in with different things going on. Mm -hmm. But then I found out everybody's really got the same stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all doing something with our arms. And we're all, hands. Yeah, we're all, you know, jacked up in the back because mm -hmm. of whatever we're doing. We're going like this or going like that or, you know, mm -hmm. we're on the computer. And the problem is we stay so long that our circulation stops. Okay. So I spend a lot of time just beating your circulation back into your body. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> that's all it is. And then teaching people how to maintain that and how not to walk out of this door and those muscles clench right back up. Mm. So, so what, would, what would one piece of advice be for that? to give your body 24 hours of rest after you had a massage. Uh, okay. Don't go home and mop the floor uh -huh. and pick up all your heavy kids and uh -huh. uh, you decide you want to paint. Don't do all that. Mm -hmm. After a massage, you need to rest your body. You can stretch. Wow. You know, you can rest, you can stretch, you can soak, things like that. And they should do those things when they come home from work, huh? And they're not. And they're not. And they're not. A lot of times they come home from work and they're doing more work. Right, nonstop, mm -hmm. nonstop. That's 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 and where we are. It's very stressful, and you practically have to beg people to get massages these mm -hmm. days. I mean, I'm just I almost congratulate people when they come in like for the first time getting mm -hmm. a massage mm -hmm. because it's very helpful. I have people that tell me they had pain in their body from different things that happened that was there for years. Mm -hmm. The doctors couldn't help them. They gave them all kind of painkillers and everything, mm -hmm. and I went in there and started working on it, knocked it out in a day or two or three, or, you know, whatever it takes. Because I know, I know the body and I know the muscles, you know. So you have like a conversation with them? Oh, definitely. I have to know what's going on. I have to know what's going on. I have to know how it got like that. <laughs> how okay. the body got that way. Mm -hmm. So I know what to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. who, who are your clients for the most part? Okay. Um, for my, for my clients for the most part are friends and family. Um, I work at a, at a, a massage studio directly across the street from the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. Mm -hmm. So these are people in the Gold Coast. These are medical professionals, um, all kind of people. You know what kind of people are on Michigan Avenue. Okay. So those are mostly my clients and have been for several years because I've always pretty much um, worked in that area. Okay. And what age range do you, do you work with? All ages. All ages. All ages. What's the youngest? I've been an infant or two. Oh. I've been an infant or two. Mm -hmm. Just the cutest thing. Oh, um, oh and I've also done some uh, gymnasts, 11, 12 year old gymnasts. Okay. Yeah, they're like, they're considered athletes. Oh, yeah. So I've done that too. They're definitely in the position to have a lot of injuries. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People, mm -hmm. and then when they're doing things like that, they, their bodies really need to be stretched back out. Because your body will clench up and doesn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. It wants to stay like that. So we have to do what we have to do to work and get the circulation back going. Now, what led to you working with the infant? <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking about it because I had a massage once from 
This person was from India. I forgot what you called this particular type of massage, but they used the hot sesame oil and they had you on this wooden table and the massage, you know, required the sesame oil. And I mean, just like a baby. And, and, they, and he said they massage their babies. Oh, you know, yeah. when, they're, when they're infants. So. Well, I just had some uh, parents that had some jealous babies. Oh. And so they had to put the babies on the table mm -hmm. and things like that. But I haven't really done it uh, professionally. Uh -huh. I would, I'm sure I would probably like to at some point. I think it's something that's needed, you know, without, right. without children, our babies, you know, once they start crying, we automatically think they want something to eat or we'll stick something in their mouth which I think has led to a lot of our eating disorders Disorders. that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as the only thing that's gonna, you know, relax me is to put some food in my mouth, right? And that's starting from an infant. But if they mm -hmm. were to take their babies, or when they get massaged, bring their babies and their children to get regular massages to calm you down, you know? Oh, yeah, I'm sure that would help a lot for like ADHD. ADHD, like that. Mm -hmm. I just, just eat even normal, normal children, you know, just getting massages. Wow, I hadn't even thought about but that, but that isn't um, a whole entire market, definitely. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's, that's interesting. Well, I think um, the ADHD, uh, you know, especially those kids that are hyperactive in the schools, uh, even going into the schools, and uh, because they have different kinds of services for children with disabilities in the schools. But uh, you might get a little bit with the physical therapist, but mostly their therapy is, is around, you know, helping you to be able to walk if you can't walk, you know, helping you be able to write, you know, visual motor mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that should be a part of the IEP. Wow. You know, wow. you know, the IEP, the yes. individual education yes. program, mm -hmm. that those children are given a, a massage every day. You know, yes. they're getting speech therapy, they're getting occupational therapy, they get physical therapy, they see the vision teacher, they may see the hearing impaired, you know, therapist. And uh, I think that would be very important because one of the problems is for those kids is getting them to calm down. And also, you know, the parents have been fighting the medication for so long. Yes. And that would be great because I see it working in adults. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and but that gets into that big argument with the drug, drug, food, food and drug administration. These pharmaceutical uh, companies. Oh yeah. You know, because yeah. they want to push these drugs out on everybody. Right. If it's not something, it seems like if it's not something that they can they can uh, profit off of, mm -hmm. then they're not going to push it. Mm -hmm. That's just yeah. the truth. <laughs> but that's something that is definitely something to consider. You know, people get massages to calm themselves down. So um, now you are also a um, massage therapist and you're a medical esthetician. So what came first, uh, being a medical esthetician and then went into a massage and or were you doing a massage and just decided to become a medical esthetician? It was definitely the massage therapy. Okay. Because I started doing massages when I was 10 and 12. Oh my goodness, how did that yeah. happen? <laughs> well, I have, I have a big brother who is three years older than me. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, he was about 13 and he was kind of overweight, but he had joined band he playing drums. So that lower back, Mm -hmm. You know, sitting there playing with that lower back. So he would always come home in the evenings, back, in, you know, with back pain. And he would say, sis, please, walk on my back. Please, please, walk on my back. Oh. And he would always beat me at everything. Like, we play cards, he'd take my money and things like that. So I was happy to do it. I was happy to, you know, march on his back. Okay, okay. <laughs> and um, it just kind of became a regular thing, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes he just really needed needed that. And then when I was 12... I had a niece, my sister had a daughter one year younger than me, and she would bring her over to the house, and I would want her to play with me all the time, but she couldn't play with me because she had migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. So I had read somewhere that massage was good for headaches in a magazine. So I was waiting for her when she came before because they, they, there were instructions there. 
So I would sit here on the floor between my knees and I have those instructions. I'm 12 years old okay. and I have these instructions on the side and I'm working her neck her shoulders, all the way up her ears, behind her neck and everything. And you just kind of instinctively... I needed the headache to go no away because I wanted to play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I didn't know that that would become my life's work. <laughs> That's interesting. And see, we never know. People have to pay attention to their children. I'm listening to two things here. First, the, the influence that your grandmother, her church... And obviously the people there mm -hmm. had on you and the development of your values. And so we as parents, uh, we as adults in the community, you know, we have a responsibility to make our actions and our behaviors a positive because our children are watching us. And then you wonder why are they acting the way they act when they, why did he do that? Why did you do that? Well, what has he seen, you know, or what have you allowed him to see or not allowed him or her to see? That's right. See, and that what you saw inspired you to do what you were doing, and then you were already demonstrating interest. So paying close attention to our children and what they're, what they're doing, you know, and saying, you know, well, he has an affinity towards this, you know, mm -hmm. and then try to maybe lead them, you know, in that direction. I believe in giving children many different experiences when they're coming up, but pay attention to what they're showing interest in and are, and are good That's at. That's so important. That is so important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So as a massage therapist now, what makes you go to esthetician? Because you could have went to reflexology, <laughs> you know, oh. all these other, you know, ologies that they have out here. What made you go to esthetician? Well, the aesthetics came after I experienced one of the biggest traumas in my life um, in 2012. I was in a, an eight year living relationship and he abruptly left me for somebody else. And it was during the time when my niece that I was just telling you about that we grew up together and I gave her the, head, the um, massages. She was dying a slow, painful death from cancer. She had breast cancer and everything. And he came in and that's what he wanted to do. He decided he was ready to go. And not only that, but the person who he left me for was, bu was bullying me on the telephone and on Facebook. So I didn't even really get time to grieve. And it just, it sent me into a deep depression for like three years. And the only thing that was that started bringing me out was that, I mean, I was staying at home. I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't really talking to people. But what really brought me out of it was one day I started looking back at Facebook. And I noticed on Facebook, people were still getting married. People were still having babies. This was after my niece died. People were still graduating. My world had stopped. The world hadn't stopped. Mm -hmm. But I just felt old. I felt old, ugly, fat. And um, I just, I needed a change. Mm -hmm. I had this thing about uh, laser, laser esthetician had, was popping up on my computer. And mm -hmm. um, now what is that? Laser, um, it's, it's really basically the same thing. We just work with lasers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I couldn't afford, you know, the um, wrinkle treatments and, okay. and all of that. And okay. They used the lasers, they used the machines. Okay. So I, I couldn't afford that particular program but I was able to get financial aid and go back to school. So I went to a school that I liked. Was it here in Chicago? Yeah, it's the Soma Institute. I would recommend that school for anybody. Soma Institute. The Soma Institute, it's on Jackson. I think it's 55 East Jackson. Okay. Yeah, and it was, a, it was kind of a small, kind of intimate setting. Mm -hmm. Very professional, very well run, very well recognized in the industry and everything. And um, well, that was massage school. That was massage school. But it was the same thing that happened with esthetician school. Um, because because it's, I only did them nine months apart, actually. So I got that a little confused there. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to learn different beauty treatments. And I wanted to learn how to clear up skin and do anti-aging and mm -hmm. just make women feel better and beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Because that's what I was thinking, like, if I could just feel better about myself, mm -hmm. maybe I could start going outside again mm -hmm. and, and doing all that. Mm -hmm. And little did I know that I went through all those experiences to help me to heal other people. Absolutely. Because sometimes we neglect that part, our, mm -hmm. our, you know, the aesthetic part, the visual mm -hmm. part, when we're going through trauma sure. and things like that. And what people don't understand a lot of times is that when you get a makeover, Mm -hmm. Or something like that. I mean, I watch them all the time. Mm -hmm. It changes things. It changes you on the inside. Okay. Maybe sometimes it might take a little makeup. Sometimes it may, may take a new outfit or something like that. But just something to to jar you into moving into the right direction to get your mind together. Okay. So that's why I started that. Because a lot of times a woman will feel like that, but she won't say anything. Mm -hmm. I'll bring it up. You don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? Would you like your eyebrows done? Would you like this? Would you like that? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, even just the shoulder massages. I was going to ask you before I even came, I was going to give you a five minute of what I do because when we were at the event, event I don't think okay. I get to give you a massage. No, you were so yeah. busy. No, you didn't. So that's it because if you can mm -hmm. make people feel a so little you're gonna bit. you're going to give me a five minute at the end? Oh. Okay, I'm going to give you a massage. <laughs> <laughs> if you can make people feel better, okay. that opens them up to learning more. Mm -hmm. Well, how can I do more? How can I get more? Well, really, it starts from the inside, but we have to do what we have to do to get you going. Like, for instance, if a person, they come to me and they want help, but they're in pain, you know, maybe they want help with, with um, something that's inside emotional or whatever, but their body might have some pain left over from whatever trauma they might have went through. It could be a car accident. It could be a, a, a battery or something where somebody's been, been injured. Or So your massage approach, if I said I was in an accident, it's going to be one way. Mm -hmm. If I said I was emotionally traumatized, then I get a different kind of massage. Yes. Now, are you using massages, like, you know, they have different kind of names of massages out here, mm -hmm. or you got your own approach? Or you do some of these other kinds of massages that they have out here? Well, one of the, one of the customers where I work at, you know, because like I said, I work right in the Gold Coast, they said, she comes in all the time, well, I, I just started. She said, don't get me wrong, all the massage therapists here are terrific. But that Rhonda is in the league of her own. Mm -hmm. um, that's because I've been doing it so long. Mm -hmm. And I've had a chance to kind of develop my own techniques, my own skills, combine different things together. I am different from a regular massage therapist. Okay. I'm very targeted with what I do. Okay. And if you have a specific area, because I'm not going to say I can, I can heal everything. I mean, nobody can. Yeah. But if you have a specific area that's really bothering you or whatever, not only am I going to... Uh, do whatever I can to help that area. But if I see that it's so deep that you might have to come back or whatever, mm -hmm. I use I work on the other areas also. I make them feel fabulous too so that you can function better. Because when certain parts of your body don't work right, then nothing works right. If your neck hurts, what can you do? Mm -hmm. What can you concentrate on if your back hurts or if your foot or your toe hurts? It affects your mobility. It affects how you move around and everything. It affects how you're feeling. And how you think. You know, and how, how well you're able to think. Because everything is connected. Yes, yes. So that's what I do. I try to put people in a frame of mind so that they can, so that they are able to move on with their lives. Because sometimes things are deep. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm learning that about myself right now. I was using my massage gun because I got some stuff that, I, that I'm having a little trouble healing. Okay. And I'm learning that sometimes you got to go a little deeper. Okay. You got to go a little deeper. And okay. since I've been taking that approach, it's been working a lot better. I'm hurting a lot less. It never stops anything, but it's there. I had an injury a while back. Okay. Now, I have a number of friends that lately, here recently, have been talking about sciatic nerve injuries. Mm -hmm. Work with, work with that as yes, well. Yes, yes. Does that that's come, nothing does but that a trapped that nerve come? under your hip bone. That's and what it, that is. And where does that come from? What do you think? Oh, it comes from either it could come from either be doing too much of something or too little of something, mm. and that nerve gets trapped there. Something, I could probably say too much. Something physical. Or? Yeah, like I have it. Like just if, when I'm doing massages, if I'm doing three, four in a day, mm -hmm. I might find myself standing on my right hip for a long time mm -hmm. 
And I don't really notice it until I get home. Mm -hmm. But I know what it is because I know where it is. It's like right right at the top of your of your hip where your glute starts. And yeah, it's just a trap nerve. And you know, the doctors they give you pain for it and everything. Sure. But I go in and I go get it. <laughs> I go get it. Yeah, uh -huh. I make it I I work everything. Like I said, if I can't get that specifically, I'll go all around it until it's you know, and then a lot of times it just takes time for the blood to start flowing again. Okay. Because like I said, if you if I'm standing up for hours and hours in one spot and then that nerve gets trapped under my hip, that is going to take some time for me to work that out. It's going to take heat. It's going to take movement. And, and, and since you do a consultation with them, you can have an idea of how it got there. Then we can talk about how to prevent mm -hmm. this from maybe reoccurring or how to address this. Uh, or maybe they need to come, depending on what's, if it's their job and whatever, you know, how you're sitting, some different cushion or posture. Uh, I do a consult before and after. Okay. And depending on what you tell me before, will have something to do with what I tell you afterwards. Okay. Because I give instructions mm -hmm. what to do to make the, the good feelings last longer when you get a massage. Okay. Because muscles, they do, they're, you know, they're flexible and they're pliable. Sure. And they do, they want to they wanna clench back up. Heat, hot mm -hmm. towels. I recommend hot towels, hot baths, mm -hmm. uh, stretching. Mm -hmm. I even show you how to use the corner of your doorways and things like that to get back pain out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, self-care is really important because sometimes you have to try to maintain and feel good until your next appointment. Mm-hmm. So, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's the way we go about doing things, and it kind of reminds me when my daughter was in um, ice skating, and the first thing they taught is how to fall. You don't fall right, cause I did it. I fell and hit this tailbone back here, and you know they said, "Well, if it's broke, it's broke. You know they can't fix it. You know it's just you gotta just let it heal. You know, cause." I fell, you know, my feet went out from under me, oh. but they teach you the first thing, they teach those children or students to come in is how to fall. And so we have to learn the correct way to do certain things. You so know, true. Picking up, lifting, you know. And you were talking about women. Um, well, men, I'm not going to say that, that women have more trauma than men. You know, it's different. It's a different experience on life. But women have to deal with uh, menstrual cycle, they have to deal with childbirth, you know, they are raising the children, they carrying the kids on their back or carrying the, the, uh, the you know, pushing the strollers, and, you know, carrying the kids around a lot, they gotta work. Um, and then you go through the, the, the end of that cycle dealing with menopause. So do you work with women specifically you know, in those areas. Say, let's say starting with when you first start your cycle, which I think, ladies, <laughs> we need to talk to our daughters about that. So it's not a shock and a surprise when they have that first experience. Oh, definitely. And oh, to goodness. understand that this is a, a new chapter in your life, a new phase in your life. You are now able to bring forth life. That's what this means. And you have a responsibility here, you know. So, and then some people have, some of my best friends, I know one of my best friends had cramps all the time. Real bad cramps, you know. So are you able to work with a women, you know, in those areas? That's a very difficult one. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a very difficult one. Um, <clears throat> I don't get too many women that come in with cramps like that, mm -hmm. but I've been dealing with my daughter mm -hmm. for many years mm -hmm. with those issues. And uh, most of the time, I mean, cause we don't really do too much on the abdomen. You know, we don't, we can, you know, we can try to relax you all the back, the back, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's very difficult. I try to tell her to put heat. She always tell me, mom, nothing helps, nothing helps. Mm -hmm. 
So we have, you know, we, we started to look at some other things because she goes through that. That's, that's some uh, pretty serious stuff there. Mm -hmm. Some women really, they really go through things with yes, crabs. But like you were saying about what women go through, mm -hmm. let me give you an idea of some statistics that I found out, some alarming statistics that I really didn't like. 72% <laughs> okay. of all murder-suicides involve an intimate partner. 94% of all murder-suicides are female. So, so that lets you know how deep the stress and the trauma is. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very deep. A lot mm -hmm. of people are carrying, I mean, I touch their shoulders and I just go, you just you got the world on your shoulders. I don't know what it is, but it's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I can touch pain. I can feel it. I can know I can touch this and tell you, is this where the pain is? And they'll say, yeah. Most of the time, because I, I know the difference when I know what abnormal feels like mm -hmm. and, and what normal feels like. Um, and I really enjoy what I do. I really enjoy the response that I can feel that. Thank you. I can feel that. Yes, I can. I work really hard and I enjoy the responses that I get when people get off the tables. Mm -hmm. And some of it is, is and I kind of work for that. It's it's pretty amazing to see what's your, going on. Your person. your approach, you know, is individualized. Very know? much so. You don't just get on the table and somebody don't, doesn't say anything to you, some person walks mm -hmm. in the room and start working mm -hmm. on you. No, you know, this is an individualized treatment. Yes, and I usually, I try so that, to cut down from a lot of talking during the massage, I, I ask them to let me know if at any point you need, you feel you need more pressure or less pressure at any point, because no massage, no, a bad massage is worse than no massage at all. Mm -hmm. It's worse, you don't want to uh, get a bad massage. So it's definitely tailored individually. Now, we, we, when you experience pain to that pressure, mm -hmm. what is that? You know, somebody working on you and they hitting something, you're like, ouch, you know, that hurts, you know. If that's what the issue is, what they told me when they came through the door, that's what hurt. Mm -hmm. And I touch it and they go, ouch. Most of the time, it means there's no blood flow there. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes they can't stand for you to touch it. So what I do is I know how to work it to bring the blood flow back. Mm -hmm and do different things depending on how bad it is. Cause some of them are, it's like, I can I can barely make a, you know, make a dip before the session is over. And then some of it is completely gone. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what's going on there, how long it's been going on. I know I've talked to certain counselors and they said a lot of times when you have someone that has a significant issue with obesity, mm -hmm. you know, it's due to some type of trauma you know, in their, in their life that has, that has led to this. So do you kind of see it on that end? Um, with women, especially our women, we're having an issue with our, with our diet and our weight and uh, the diabetes especially and the high blood pressure especially we hear in our community, uh, which is coming from our diet, you know, and then that leads to heart attacks and strokes and gout and all of that. What we're doing is we're just working right on through it. Mm -hmm. I see people with, you know, with these issues and everything, and they just, you know, they're trying. I give them credit for you just coming and getting on the table. Mm -hmm. And they look at it as a start. Sure. You know, because they feel good from the massage. Now they want to do something else to make themselves feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, now they may think about eliminating sweets or taking that trip to the gym or taking that walk. Most of the people that come to me, though, are involved in some type of exercise, even okay. if it's just walking. Okay. And because that's what it is, their muscles kind of need something. So walking is good? Oh, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of senior citizens that stay active by walking. Mm -hmm. And I really admire and respect that. Yeah, my mom walks a lot. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I love it. And, you know, they can always add to it. You can put little weights on your arms, on your wrists, if you feel like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may mm -hmm. want to walk a little bit further next time. Okay. It's all, there's always ways to improve. And that's what I teach in my programs. I have people to stretch their limits. Okay. You have to stretch your limits in order to grow, in order to reach the next yeah, level. Okay. Stay Everybody at that wants level. to level up. Nobody <laughs> wants to stay at the same level. Uh -huh. Okay, bye. And you're having trouble moving. You seem so stagnant and you have so many obstacles. Just move a little something. That's what I say and that's mm -hmm. what I do. 
in my own life, in my practice and everything. You got to move a little something because you don't want to stay at the same level. Mm -hmm. You have to grow. Um, because if you're not growing and you're not dealing with a lot of these emotions and situations and things that pop up, then you might find yourself in one of these statistics. And that's what you don't want to do. So we want to keep people out of those statistics. Oh, um, yeah, these suicide rates are... That's, that's, that's... And, how to, and, and you know what, what it is, too? When a person is suicidal, it's like it, there's either something going on on the inside or on the outside. And, and usually it's something on the outside. And they feel no way out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and that's one of the things that I like to talk to people about. True. Because in my trauma, mm -hmm. I, um, when, when I was going through what I told you about with the, with my ex and mm -hmm. the girl bullying me and my niece, the person closest to me, and my, I just lost my mother a few years, a year mm -hmm. so earlier. Mm -hmm. And it was just too much to have to handle all of this, feeling alone, having to handle it all by myself. And I was devastated. I was hurt, humiliated, anxious, angry, full of rage. Mm. Um, I was jealous, confused, paralyzed, suicidal and homicidal. I felt used, degraded, hopeless, frustrated, sabotaged, gaslighted, betrayed. And the worst of it all was I was alone. I was alone, alone. I was trying to deal with all of this by myself. I felt like God himself had left me. And I, once I started getting better, I said, I never, ever, if I can help it on my watch, wanna watch anybody go through something like that and I have nothing to offer. I have no way to help. Because there's always a word you can give to somebody, even if it's just, hello, how you doing? Mm -hmm. You know. I got a lot of those. I said, well, God gave me this. That's how I felt like I wanted to, I wanted to help people to heal and get better. You know, I want to try to help with that suicide and that murder rate. And sometimes as friends and family, we want to help each other. You see what somebody may be doing is wrong. Like you said, you see, well, you see the outside of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so you're telling them they shouldn't do this. They shouldn't do that or you maybe provide too much support when you come become oh, a lot you, of that my early when days. You become an enabler <laughs> yes. and they don't they you begin to use you as a, as a crutch so when you're trying to help somebody it's hard to find that balance you know of pushing and and not pushing too hard you know where you make the break, break the person down you know Yes, and it can be it can be draining. It can be draining. Yes, it can for the for the practitioner too. Mm -hmm. um, I can't take on everybody. I have to take on people who are willing, because some people have an excuse for why they can't do something at mm -hmm. all times, everything. So it's like, well, when you're ready to start facing some of these things that you need to face, mm -hmm. then you need to come to me because. Right. You can't just say, well, well, I tried that, that didn't work. I tried that, that didn't work. I tried that, that didn't work. Did you really try it? Did you really give it a chance? Mm -hmm. You have to be open and willing. Mm -hmm. That's one of the requirements. You have to be open and willing. Because you're going to have to, we have to face some deep stuff that we don't want to face. Mm -hmm. I had to face some deep stuff, you know, uh, on multiple occasions. And it was very hard, very trying. But, oh, but when you get to the other side, it's the gift. Like they told me my trauma was a gift, that what mm -hmm. I went through. Mm -hmm. Boy, people telling me that, man, I wanted to slap them upside the head. How could that be a gift? It is a gift. Oh, it, it's not easy to see. You don't see it. Because mm -hmm. the, the box is still, you haven't unwrapped it. It's really a gift. Well, it's, you were willing. You were willing to do it. I you had know, to. I felt like your life was this been given to many people, but everybody's not listening. Right. Everybody's not going to take up that responsibility and that mantle. So you, so you were willing to listen and, and, and move on it. Mm -hmm. Not just for myself, but for, for others mm -hmm. also. Because you know that song say, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then go. my living will not be in vain. Wow. I want to stop somebody from killing themselves. I want to mm -hmm. stop somebody from a possible homicide just because mm -hmm. he left with Mary. Mm -hmm. You know. So what? He did you a favor. He did you a favor. Oh, by the way, the guy is, uh, he's trying to come back now. It's been 10 years. Just to, just to let you know. 
it's, it, it's principles. I stuck to my principles. I didn't get ugly. I didn't want to fight. I didn't want to argue, whatever. I left it peaceful. You, okay, you go on and you do that. And I'm just going to stay over here and try to put my little pieces back together. Okay. But look at my pieces now. Mm -hmm. Look at my pieces. I have so many things that I can do, so many things that I can teach people and help them so that they are better. Now I can help make people better. Okay, if that's if that's if that was the outcome, if that was the plan in the beginning, I'm so glad I accepted the assignment. Wow. <laughs> How often should someone get massages? You know, let's say let's go with the person that you know doesn't really have so much going on, you know, with them and somebody that really has a lot of problems. You know, how often should somebody be coming in to get a massage? Um, I would say at least once a month. Mm -hmm. It should be incorporated into your routine monthly. Monthly. Mm -hmm. But if you have a serious injury, injury or something, like if you have something that won't move, something that won't bend, mm -hmm. uh, something that's bulging out, no, you might need to come once a week or once every two weeks wow. to get that you know, taken care of. Mm -hmm. Of course, we recommend that you see your doctor, your psychiatrist, or or um, counselor first, or whatever, medical professional. But what I offer is for some people who, who maybe you don't have a, a medical professional, maybe you can't afford to go to the doctors or whatever, and you don't want, maybe you don't want to, you want to try something else before you start taking uh, pills and medication. I'm not recommending that, or maybe you've already tried it. So we're not trying to, we're not trying to replace the doctors or anything. We're trying to work in conjunction. We're trying to give you something that they don't give you. Mm -hmm. We're trying to offer something else because sometimes you need more. Like a psychiatrist, they're only going to see you what once a week, uh, or once a month or whatever to prescribe medications or whatever, and that's fine. But well, you know, people are on so much medication now. You know, I know people yeah. just taking 17, 20 pills a day. Different kind of pills. You know. you talk to them. Yeah, <laughs> taking all, the, all that medication and one thing leads to another. You know, and they have to take one medication to deal with the other medication because of what it's doing. Mm -hmm. And all of this medication has to be filtered through your kidneys, you know. And uh, I think that's why we have so many dialysis clinics. I think so Because of all this medication, because the first thing is, is bringing the medication. So getting massages is an approach, the way I'm seeing it, to you trying to take control of what's happening with you. And who knows better than you what's been going on in your life. Sometimes you need to talk to somebody to help make you aware of certain things. So true. So you true. know. And some things are hard to talk about. Some things have been embedded way And sometimes back. you forgot things and mm -hmm. you don't even know that it's still bothering it's you. It's still there. Yeah. Because if it hasn't been dealt with, it's still there. Right? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so we got a lot of collection of I don't know what. You think it's you just know. piled on top of mm -hmm. each other. <laughs> and then our traumas that our people have had. Doing during slavery, some of that's been passed on. Trauma. Yeah, and problems that happened in families, you know, that's been passed yeah. on, and then just dealing with racism today, and and just the stress, you know, for everybody, you know, trying yeah. to make it today. You know, I wish very that, hard on us as black people. That's right. But it shows how strong we are because we're still standing. Yes. I wish we had that generational wealth like we have that generational trauma. Mm -hmm. We have an abundance of that instead mm -hmm. of an abundance of trauma because that's what we inherited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need more healers. So I'm going to devote more of my time to teaching people how to do it themselves. I'm going to do some videos and give instructions so that you can do it as a, as a couple or you can do it with a friend or family mm -hmm. member. And oh, just get that's those a beautiful main, thing. Yeah. yeah, working as couples. Oh, yeah, I'm working with family, somebody right now families, to get that. The mother, mm -hmm. the father, the children. It's very important. It's very mm -hmm. important. And it could be different body parts. It could be it could be a foot massage. It could be a hand massage, mm -hmm. a neck massage, a shoulder massage. So I'm going to be breaking those down and doing that. I have somebody working with me to help me get that together. Okay. Now, now, you do uh, 
a month, is it a monthly program that you're on um, or that you're going to be doing? Um, uh, yeah, with the, with the counseling, yeah, it's going to be um, a monthly program, but I don't have a monthly set up. Okay, just so yet. that's something you're working on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so if they follow you on your website, okay, which is your website? HealingTraumaLikeABoss.com. Okay. Or you can go to JD3TV.com and you can look up hosts and you'll see me there, Rhonda Johnson. I'm one of the hosts of uh, a TV show called Healing Trauma Like a Boss. And you can also subscribe right there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, and you have a book? A book uh, coming out? Yes. The book is coming out in November. Mm -hmm. It's an anthology with about... Um, was it about six to 12 other women? We're each telling our story in the book. Mm -hmm. And we have a wonderful person who's guiding us through it and mm -hmm. supporting us. And her name is Martha Dubois. And she's a, a seven time best selling author. And we were just working under her tutelage. And it's, it's great. We're learning more. And like I said, leveling up. <laughs> wow. And you've had some mentors along the way, I'm sure. Oh, yes. I'm working with some marvelous people right now. James, Sir Dr. James Denley from JD3 TV. Okay. Um, he's, he's the best. He, with this, with JD3 TV, all the TV show hosts, and there are a lot of us, all the TV show hosts are doing something to help humanity. Nobody's working just for money. That's it's right. something to help humanity. That's us. Yes, and it, it, it has to be that way. That's it right. needs to be that way. Mm -hmm. Because I think in the end, those are going to be the ones, the organizations that are left standing. The mm -hmm. way you see things are going on right now, mm -hmm. it's like, I see some crumbling going on. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so we want to stick with the people that are helping people who need help. Right. Yes. Right. So what kind of advice would you give to um, us people who are aspiring to get into this get into this field, you know, of massage therapy? Young or older people, you know, what, what would you say to them? Well, one thing I would say is, if you are doing massages and you're practicing massages on your family and friends like I did when I was even really young, and people tell you that you have a talent, then I think you should go for it. Even if they don't tell you that and you feel you have a talent for it, I think you should go for it. Find a massage school, keep practicing on your friends and family, don't hurt anybody, don't go too hard, but keep following your dreams because you will be led. There's some great massage therapy schools all over the country, and it doesn't take long. Are you familiar long. with Dudley? Do, do, do Dudley teach massage, or they just basically deal with hair? Hair? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, years ago, I know it was just hair, but I don't know what they're into okay, I know now. They do the nails because I know somebody that has a nail shop that graduated from there. Oh, that's awesome! So I'm not sure. It's something to find out. It's it's all together though. It's uh -huh. it's all together. It's all. Uh -huh. I mean, don't think beauty doesn't help with healing trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, a beauty, the nails, the hair, all of that. I think that healing. Um, that um, playing golf can help heal trauma. Mm -hmm. I think it's whatever you need to do. I'm not saying that's all you need to do, but you have to have something from, I won't say inside of you, but you have to have something that makes you feel good inside. Mm -hmm. Some type of way. Without hurting anybody else, you have to find something for yourself because a lot of times as women and mothers, we give so much. Mm -hmm. We give mm -hmm. so much to the point of next thing you know, we sick. That's right. You know, and that's where they talk about the care, the caregiver. Yes. The mother, the, when other people on the other end, with the hospice, yes. uh, when people are getting sick uh, in hospice. What is that like working with? We have to stop losing ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to. Oh, um, in hospice, you can learn so much. Mm -hmm. You can learn so much. You have to have a heart for it. Sure. You know, because you're helping somebody transition. Mm hmm and you also have to um, be aware and help the family as well because sometimes it's very hard for them. And um, uh, I've seen a lot of families where the, this is where things come out like 
uh, they start fighting over inheritances oh and trust God. and things before the person is even in the ground. That's terrible. So you have to watch out because it's, it's always usually like one or two specific people that just, you know. And people should be thinking about <laughs> more than that, about what they're going to get when this person is gone. It should be more about what did I get while this person was here. And, and, what then, did I do? and then okay. when that person is gone, what that person has left me, not, not necessarily in money, mm -hmm. but in their spirit, in their energy, like what your grandmother left you, is still with you. Yes. She still, yes. her spirit still lives through you. Yes. And I think it makes you think differently about death, not just being the end of something, That's you know, right. of, your, of your life. Because the kind of life that you live is going to impact, you know, those people that you're leaving behind. That's so it's going to have had an impact on them, the good and the bad <laughs> that you right. that you did, and and so that's the kind of conversation because those are the things when you get the money, if the head isn't right, you're gonna blow the money. Mm -hmm. Just like people win the lottery, you know, and they're broke next year. You just won millions of dollars and you're broke next year. Why? Because your head and your heart. Your values are not in the place that they should be in. I'm not going to say right, wrong. I'm just going to say they're not where they should be. Because if they were, this would not happen. You know? So yeah. that's what the discussion needs to be about. Right. Because if people's values, moral standards, and things like that were in place, the world would really be a, a much better place. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at a lot of people who just who don't have that. For whatever reason, it's not being imparted. It's just that's and you can't give what you don't not, have. No. And and it's so. not about getting on the microphone and and lecturing. It's mm -hmm. about what you are doing. Like those people didn't come and tell you you gonna be a minister. You know, blah. No, it's what they were doing, and you were sitting there listening, and so was somebody else. You know, so it's what you do, not so much what you say. And I, I had no idea the principles were being ingrained in me mm -hmm. uh, back when I was six. Of course they that were. Would, that would still be carrying me at 58. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I had no idea. But now I know that's what it's all about. And going back to that, when we were talking about women, and when a young lady comes into her time for her menstrual cycle, mm -hmm. that's a very important time of her life. You know, Because now you can bring a life into the world. And what does that mean? What responsibility do you have when you do that? And too often, it's for a check, or it's to get a man, or you know, mm -hmm. no, you know. And so then, or to feel wrong, and then or cause somebody else is doing mm -hmm. it, you know. And so when a child comes here, you know, what do you feel or know that your responsibility is, even if you don't know a lot? You know, just like you didn't know a lot, and you grew, and you looked for the right things to do in your work, mm -hmm. and and it came to you because of what you was looking for. But well, what are they looking for? You know, get the kids, dress them up, put all the cute little clothes on them. But it's way more to being a mother and feeding them McDonald's. That's right. <laughs> Cook, thinking about cooking for what what. All of a sudden, you go into what's you should be going to mode of what's best for this child. I mean, I'm going to have to make some sacrifices. So true. So yeah. So listen, are we gonna, am, am I going to get my mascot? My mascot? You most I'm definitely gonna, are. Okay. So I am. You look like you're ready to get yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is Rhonda Johnson. Uh, transformational coach uh, you you have learned something um, the way we do it at times you know we don't have all of this whatever other tools and maybe other people we have some other tools yes. that we draw from what's inside is yes. how you develop even through your uh, practical training okay you've mm -hmm. gotten that you know because you're a medical clinical massage therapist you know you're an esthetician so yeah, you've gone through all of that, but you've also gone inside. Definitely. Okay, Definitely. so I'm gonna let you go inside and give me a massage 
before we end this program. Okay. Okay, so Sounds you want good. me to sit, just sit in my chair? Okay, you want me to do it right here? Uh-huh. Okay, let's do it. I need a little oil or something, just something slippery on my hands. Okay, you need a little bit of oil. Okay, right now, just excuse me. Oh, okay. I'm the, oh, perfect oil. Oh, boy. Perfect, yes. Okay, I'm glad I they say if you can't eat it, it shouldn't be on your skin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I'm going to give Miss Denise just a, a small stress relief treatment. I wanted to give it to her before the interview, but it didn't work out that way because when I came in, she was ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, here we go. Okay, in case you wonder what's going on, I'm getting a massage from Rhonda Johnson. Oh wow, that feels good. Yeah, because we were vendors and we were sitting right next to each other. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get to give her a massage. Yes, she did. Yeah, this really, it really helps the blood flow. Mm -hmm. Because when we stay busy all the time, you know, our muscles still work, but it just becomes less and less comfortable. Mm -hmm. And. We shouldn't have to go through that. Massage guns are good too. Massage what? Massage guns. Massage guns? Massage guns. Pow pow. Oh, <laughs> I keep a massage gun near me at all oh, times because I, get that I never know from. when stuff is just going to stiffen up. Mm. Am I stiff? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I'm so I'm so busy. <laughs> I felt it. I'm a busy, busy bee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing everything. I'm gonna have to bring my massage gun over here. <laughs> <laughs> now, when people get massages, do you go to their homes or uh, do you have a facilities that you invite them to come to? Well, right now, I'm not doing, I, I've had uh, facilities before, but right now I'm working uh, at a place down well in this in the streeterville area mm -hmm. across the street from shirley ryan ability lab mm -hmm. and yes. i do go to homes and uh treat people okay um but i'm looking forward to getting my my own space again at some point okay but because the place that i work at i only work there two days a week because mm -hmm. it's somebody else's establishment and i want to work on getting my own putting my everything together so that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, when the blood starts to circulate, it feels so good. Yeah, it's like you forgot it was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that should be happening with us all the time. And sure, I'm sure it'll help keep a lot of uh, ailments and uh, diseases away. You oh, know, definitely, definitely. The type of, uh, people should be getting them at work. On the job, everywhere. Mm. Well, I have to tell you, people, this is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. Right, because we have to start going deeper now. <laughs> going deeper because, because Denise is busy. <laughs> wow. Well, I look okay. forward to doing it for you one day. You know, Absolutely. specifically for you when it's your day, your time. Because what I do, I bring a whole table. 
Okay. I bring the sheets, the pillowcase, everything. Okay. okay. Sit down. Absolutely. And um, I, I put you on the table, and I find out what's the worst. What what's, what are the worst three things that are bothering you? Okay. What's bothering you? Anything bothering you on your body? Mm -hmm. And then I just I try to focus. Mm -hmm. You know, you could give me up to five, but okay. I can't promise you on. And how long are your massages usually? Um, anywhere from an hour. Well, I do 30 minutes too, but an hour to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do 30s, we do hours, and we do 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, that, hey, that, that was great. It's a very nice touch, and I feel even more relaxed. But I'm sure I need a special uh, appointment to deal with uh, my own, you know, uh, stressors and things that I may have to deal with in life, and I'm definitely looking She's forward to that. She's going to get that, too. She's I am definitely one. looking yes. forward to that. So, Rhonda, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you again. Okay. Well, you can call me at 773-577-3279, or you can email me at Rhonda, J-O-J-N-S-O-N, at gmail.com, or you can contact me through Denise right here. <laughs> Absolutely. Call you can email uh, us at blackbeers.grow at gmail.com, and we'll be very happy to send your referral over to Rhonda. All right? So, Rhonda, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. That's right, and I want to thank you for doing what you do. And friends and family, this is Behind Black Business, uh, definitely a business that we should support. Please go to our website at rrgbc.org. Subscribe so you can become one of our winners. Go to the um, Save Black Bookstores Chicago at change.org and sign our petition to help our bookstores. You can also go to our website where you can purchase from our online store, which helps our efforts, and also you can donate. So again, I want to thank you for coming and good night. <laughs>